Well, hello, this is KCMI 97.1 Hope Radio's Ask the Pastor um, program where we talk with different pastors about um, different topics, uh, theological topics, what's happening in the lives of the different churches in the area. Um, right now we're talking about things that, uh, that we're passionate about, going through a series on that. Uh, my name is John Mulholland, and I'm one of the pastors at Westway Christian Church in Scotts Bluff. And I'm Kylie Calloway from Northfield Church in Gearing. And I'm Tyson Lambertson from the Rock Church in Scotts Bluff. And for this set of podcast series, we're talking with uh, Tyson about what um, what he's passionate about, what gets him up in the morning, and um, just really quick re- recap um, community. Yeah. Really, one you said just one more, one more yeah. um, within the context of community. Is that yes, fair? One, one in the context of bringing them into the Christian community. Perfect. But then how do you sustain that? How does that, how, how do you keep the longevity of that? Um, one of the things that you see Jesus do is he really focuses on the deepest part of who people are. He always goes to the heart with people mm. to see transformation. And we're emotional beings. And so one of the things I'm passionate about, my wife and I have been passionate about and learning uh, at a rapid rate is, is what we call core corrective emotional uh, experiences. So when we talk about that, that the heart drives everything else, right? Uh, the heart. The Bible says a lot about the heart, you know. Um, has some good things to say about it and some bad things to say, to say about it. But if you change the heart, you change the rest of the person. And so one of the things that we have really tried to focus on, and when I talk about heart, I'm talking about heart, mind, all that simultaneously. When you begin to change that and really focus on helping somebody change the way they think, change the way they be, change the way they live, all of a sudden you see someone flourish. It's like when Paul says, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. How we, how we minister and how we love people in those critical times mm-hmm. are very, very key into their sustainability of their Christian faith as well as their community and how, what, how they view the community. So Jesus knew that through these experiences of seeing the mind renewed, people could create new ways of thinking, new ways of being. And I think this goes back to the woman at the well. The woman that was caught in adultery, I mean, you think about that, they were getting ready to stone her. And he says, you who are without sin, you cast you cast for stone. He gets up and they're all gone. He says, I don't condemn you. Go and sin no more. Just think about that transformation that happened in her mind at that point. What? Go ahead. No, no, you go ahead. <clears throat> I I like that John four story, and for lots of reasons. Um, one of the reasons I like it is Jesus is Jesus is not afraid. He's not encumbered by our. Um, man, how do I want to say this? Like we don't have the cur. I think a lot of times we don't have the courage to speak to what's actually going on in someone's life. We don't. We don't have. The and, capacity? Yeah, well, I think it, well, obviously, Jesus is God. So he knows, he knows more of the story about her and what's really going on. Um, but with that knowledge, like, he's not afraid to, he's not afraid to confront her reality. Right. I mean, look at Mary Magdalene. Uh, she's considered a disciple of the Lord in other texts, other manuscripts that she was with him always. Well, she was, she was the worst of the worst. And yet he saw transformation in her because he called out stuff that he would, but there was such a love about him, such a care and concern about him that there was transformation when people just looked at him. And, and I think that's one of the things we have a hard time <clears> with <throat> and I'm trying to learn and I struggle with still is just being where my feet are, being in the moment, listening to people, if we would just listen to people, we could really change a life. And so this idea of pursue, influence, multiply that comes in my life is being where my feet are, being intent in the conversation. But I don't know if you're like me. Sometimes I'm intent in a conversation. I'll see somebody else walk by 
and I'm hijacked, you know, it's like, oh, I'm gonna look, they're going out the door and I'm not paying attention anymore. So I think in order to discover the relationships yeah. and the effectiveness and how powerful they are, we need to slow down and be present as Jesus was with the woman at the well, because that creates community. You were saying, uh, I want you to repeat it though. You said that the reason that we don't confront people at their core was what? Um, that we don't have the courage to do that? I think, yeah, I think it, often we don't, we lack the courage yeah. to do that. When you said that, I, I was thinking about community and how I think churches have miserably failed to truly form a family. Because I think when you're talking about going at the core of people, we see that within the family, the family unit, because there's trust and there's that love and there's that unconditional, you know, you're never going to leave me, you're my family. Um, How do we as pastors shift that or how have you tried to Shift that in your own church. I know this was a quick study that you and your wife did, and I think it's admirable. Um, especially it goes down to my wheelhouse of counseling. But um, how, how do you see that pushback from the mm. church? Because we're no longer Christ followers. We're Christ admirers. And I think when we truly become Christ followers as a family, then we all become to a place of vulnerability yeah. And you don't really mind coming into my core because I want to change. So, so one word, Kylie, <clears throat> and this is something that is key to what you just said, to creating a safe place, mm-hmm. is attuning. Attuning. I think we don't attune. And because of that, we have fractured relationships, hurt relationships. We don't forgive quickly. We hold on to grudges. And we are, we're too busy. So explain that word attuning to maybe right. somebody that may not so, understand. Like me. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> For me, attuning is humbling myself, mm-hmm. stop what I'm doing, and pay attention. Sure, but that's... <clears throat> be where my feet are. You are individual. Yes. Jesus never approached anybody as, and this is what I'm saying, is if we attune... That's what made Jesus' ministry effective, is that he attuned to the one. Correct. And he saw transformation in the one. And the one went and did what? Told people about the transformation that took place. I think we are more interested in talking and doing rather than just being. And we don't contain, we don't listen, we jump to conclusions, and it fractures relationships. If we would just attune and just be present, be where our feet are. I think a lot of this uh, admirers would be moved towards transformational change. Are are you tracking what you're saying? Yeah, I'm tracking what you're saying, but I think, and I could be wrong, and I'm thinking of it as a a mass scale because that's what we're in, right? We have a mass of people that come. Uh, I think your journey, contextually has been through a series of events that have brought you to this breaking place to truly realize that this must be the next step, right? So for the regular Joe that comes in that is not there, how do we as pastors create more people that know how to attune? that's, That's what I'm trying to drive down is in attuning, if we model it and do it well, you're equipping the saints for the work of the ministry. It may be John, or it may be Sally, who attunes to that person. That is not directly affected, but it's gotta start somewhere. Sure. So as a leader of a church and as a leader of a community, I want to attune well. Do I do it the best? Absolutely not. But for discipleship to be effective and long lasting, it has to go to the deepest places of a person's soul. And that only takes place when we lean in and attune and drive down into what's really going on in the heart. Because a lot of times we think, you know, counseling, uh, you work with people, we think there's this, this is the situation and we can diagnose it real quick. 
But when we attune and start to listen, that's something completely different. Sure. It could be childhood trauma. It could be marital trauma. I mean, there's different things. It could be the, the linchpin that if we are quickly to rush to decision, we don't make, we make the wrong decision and we, we can diagnose wrong and that, that leads to disaster. I think the key is, <clears throat> I think the key is demonstrating what this looks like. So if I'm talking <coughs> to someone and I, and like, um, I very much feel that on Sunday morning, right? Like after our, after our gathering, I'm talking to someone and oftentimes like a few other people will kind of come up because they want to talk or whatever. And it can be very easy to feel like I have to like rush through this conversation oh, to get, difficult. to get, to get to the next person. Um, so I think, I think demonstrating what it looks like to actually be engaged in what people are talking about and what people are doing and active listening and all of those kinds of things to show other people like this is what community actually looks like. Mm -hmm. um, I like what you said about g kind of creating a safe space. I know that phrase gets <laughs> gets a lot of um, gets a lot of bad reviews, but I think that's really important. Is do I can I talk to someone and can they share something with me? Can I share something with mm -hmm. them? And like that's not going to be um, you know that's not going to be used against me. Right. Um, I think that's another thing, it, Jesus with the woman at the well, is that Jesus knew all of her bad parts, and yet he remained close to her. And as he remained close, <coughs> what keeps us isolated is shame and guilt. And that shame and guilt began to fall off because she had an encounter. And it may only take one encounter for them to say yes to the Lord. But you're right. The safe place does get a bad rap. What better place to get it? Mm -hmm. It's true. Um, well, I think that's a good stopping point for um, for this session. Um, thanks for uh, joining us today on KCMI uh, ninety seven one Hope Radio. Ask the pastor. Um, we'll have more conversation next time about the power and importance of community and bringing people into that community.